Hi, gang. Well, it's uh, Wednesday, and good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day you're watching this. I'm so glad we have this one-on-one -on -one opportunity to come together and to just to get God's daily bread. Uh, I was just thinking about that prayer Jesus said, give us this day, Heavenly Father, give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. And he, God wants you to know that tomorrow is gonna take care of itself. We're gonna meet tomorrow when we get there. We're gonna meet tomorrow when we meet tomorrow. We are already in dancing with today, so let's dance with the day that brought us. Amen? I mean, let's dance with today. Tomorrow will come, and we will ha be happy to, to, to get to know tomorrow when it comes. We don't have to worry about it. We have to take, uh, there's enough cares, Jesus said, right? Uh, today has enough cares of its own, but uh, even today's cares, we get to cast on him because he cares for us. So be encouraged. I want you to know that God knows what we need. He knows what you need. He knows what you're going through. He knows what our world is going through. He knows what you went through a year ago. He knows what, what you went through 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. He knows what people were gonna need a thousand years ago. He knew what people would need 2000 years ago. He knows what you're gonna need 2,000 seconds from now, 2,000 minutes from now, if 2,000 hours from now, if, if you have the, that amount left in your lifetime span, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what that adds up to, but you're gonna live forever with Jesus if you have received him as your Savior and Lord, so the good news there. Um, so be at peace today, you know, look, we don't even know fully all that's happening in the world today. We, we know what it looks like. We know what a pandemic looks like now, more uh, up close and personal, right? Um, but we don't know what the actual source of that is, physically, scientifically. We don't know the cure for it. And, and, and so we assume certain things. And so we kind of brace ourselves for this moment when we should be preparing ourselves for life and not just for moments, but for life. Not, not reactionary, but uh, preparatory. And that's why I keep preaching and saying and declaring the two power twins, faith and wisdom. We, in this hour and in any hour, faith and wisdom, faith and wisdom. Faith is believing what God said. Faith is trusting God. Wisdom is taking practical steps. That, that apply knowledge. So we apply scientific knowledge, we apply medical knowledge, we wash our hands, we keep our distance, but all those things. That's wisdom, applying the knowledge in the way that best um, encourages, strengthens, brings victory in your life, in your everyday life. So faith, which is which comes from hearing the word of God, the word of Christ, the word of what Jesus did for us, faith, and wisdom, faith and wisdom, faith and wisdom. Well, today we're gonna to continue our 30 days of rest and then um, I'm gonna take some questions. We had some uh, spillover questions from yesterday we couldn't get to, I apologize. And you might wanna call and ask your question today and, um, or call, uh, post, respond to um, comment on whatever platform you're watching on and um, we'll take as many questions as we can in a couple moments. I won't. It won't take as long in the pre-talk as I did yesterday. So uh, we're on day eight of 30 days of rest. We started this right around April 1st. I skipped day six. I'll come back to that uh, if we have time, but um, we'll stay with this. I'm staying with you every day. I want to touch you every day. I want to hear from you every day. I want to hear your comments every day. I want to hear from where you're watching every day. I want to hear your prayer requests. Uh, as often as you have them. But again, we can go to God and we're going to go together to God today for whatever your prayer needs are. Uh, if two shall agree about anything they ask, Jesus said it shall be done for them by my heavenly father, by our heavenly father, right? So be encouraged today. Everything's going to be all right. And um, the gospel is the good news in any generation, in any season, in any valley, in any mountaintop, in any dark hour. 
in any midnight hour, the gospel is the good news. And we're going to the other side. We are going to the other side. Okay, so we're on day eight of 30 days of rest. These are pearls of pure grace. Grace is God's unmerited love and favor towards us. And unearned, this is grace, receive it. Day eight, faith is the victory. Say that out loud, say faith is the victory. And the scripture here that I wanna to read to you out of is 1 John 5, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You've been born of God. If you're born again, you've, you're, you're born of God, therefore you will overcome the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Notice he doesn't say this is the victory that will overcome the world, our faith. He says this is the victory that has overcome our faith. Our faith is the victory in past tense. We already got it. It is finished. Jesus already did it. You already got it. We're not living for the victory. We're living from, from the victory. Okay. I'm sorry for all the body language. It's just how I communicate, but we're living from the victory. I want to come right in that screen and come right there and, and get this to you and kiss you with this truth. Let God kiss you with this promise and with this, uh, this reality that our, our new creation reality, our reality of who we are in Christ, we're never giving that up. We're never letting that go. This is who we are. This is how we know what we're living for by knowing who we are, by knowing who God is and knowing who he made us to be in him. Hey, so this is the victory that has overcome, that has overcome past tense. You already got it. We already got the victory over the virus. We already got the victory over your finances. We already got the victory over your fear. We already have the victory over your anxiety. We got the victory over your depression. I know you say, well, where is it? It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. Where is it? It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. Believe with your heart, speak it with your mouth. So let me uh, read you what I wrote here. Uh, the, this amazing promise shows us that we already have the victory. So many believers get weary and they struggle because they're trying to obtain something that they already have. That would wear anyone out. That wore me out for years until I really understood this and got a revelation of this and still getting a revelation. Uh, but God shows us here that our faith is what Jesus, our faith is in what Jesus already did. And our faith is in God's word. And that is the victory. We already, we have already overcome the world. Rejoice today. We've already overcome the world. Rejoice today because you have the victory over sin, over sickness, over fear, over anxiety, over depression, over lack, over financial need, and over the devil. We no longer fight for this place of victory. We fight from this place of victory and simply believe we have received it. So that's day eight of 30 days of rest. Um, I hope you're encouraged by that. Faith is the victory we have overcome. This is the victory that, over, that has overcome the world, that has overcome the world, our faith. It has overcome. You got it. You got it. Say, I got it. Where, where is it? You say, where is it in the government? Where is it in the, in the atmosphere? Where is it in, you know, why are we having to social distance? Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? Where is the victory then if we already have it? It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. Believe it, speak it, believe it, speak it. It's already there, it's already done, but it gets activated. It gets purchased at the cross. It gets activated when your heart and mouth cross the atmosphere with your words, okay? Does that make sense? Hope so. All right, <laughs> questions. Oh, wow, this is small. Can you guys make it bigger for the old guy? Uh, the, la the bottom question there. Uh, do you think this pandemic could be the result or consequences? Thank you. <laughs> 
Honey, I shrunk the question. Um, do you think this pandemic could be the result of consequences of wrong decision making? Um, certainly, if we if we like, I don't want to I don't want to point the finger at anybody. But if it is as we think it is that some Chinese bat thing that was eaten in the bad food section of the uh, of the of the of the of the of the food animal chain in China, uh, then yeah, that's a bad decision, and it was a bad decision for the Chinese government. And I don't want I'm not political here. So, but if this is as we have learned then, um, yeah, that would that, that, that's a bad decision that they didn't tell us sooner. Um, but we all make bad decisions. And, you know, when you point the finger, when you point the finger out at somebody else, you got three fingers pointing back at you. So we all make bad decisions. And I'm not excusing their bad decision or accusing, but everything bad in this world is the result of a bad decision in some way. Bad decision, and the majority of the problems in this world, really, you can, all of them are rooted in Adam and Eve's bad decision to eat from the tree of knowledge that they shouldn't have eaten from. So, in that sense, everything is from a bad decision, their bad decision. We, are, we're, we only became sinners because Adam and Eve sinned. But thank God we become the righteousness of God because, Jesus, because of Jesus' obedience, not because of our obedience. So, we here, Jesus said we can go to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in our time of need. What is mercy and what is grace? Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. We don't deserve salvation, but he gives it to us. We don't deserve healing, but he gives it to us. We don't deserve blessing, but he gives it to us. That's grace. So what's mercy? Mercy is God withholding from us what we do deserve. We do deserve the consequences of our bad decision, but we can go to God for mercy. We do deserve consequences for our sins, but we can go to God for mercy. We do deserve a bad harvest for the bad seeds we sown, but we can go to God for his mercy. You see the difference between mercy and grace? Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God withholding from us what we actually do deserve. Sometimes I need a lot of mercy. Some days I need a lot of mercy. Sometimes, some days I need a lot of grace and all days I need both. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, if that makes sense, hope that's a great question, by the way. Um, listen, uh, next question. How do you get someone to stop bringing up your past? Hang up. Hang up the dang phone. Stop feeding yourself in your own ear what they're dishing out. Okay, next question. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm messing with you a little. It's an accurate answer, but I'm just, you know, I, I might, you can tell my tone is a little sassy. Uh, but that is the right answer. You know, don't you, you, you if someone, where, where'd that question go? I forgot what it is now. Disappeared. <laughs> How do you get someone to not bring up your past? How do you get someone to not bring up your past? Uh, I forgot it already. Uh, I forgot your past. Forgot mine. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, if you if you're stuck in a relationship with them, uh, the, if you you know if they're a relative or something or they work with you, like just just ask them, you know, hey, would you forgive me? Uh, this is probably going to be the last time I ask you for it but I really mean it this time. Would you forgive me? And sort of, you know, err on the side of, of kindness and mercy, but don't, uh, but don't keep listening to that stuff. Okay. Uh, how? Oh, uh, small print again. Um, <laughs> I struggle in my faith for my finances. Should I pray more? Is there a way to increase faster? Okay, great question. Um, I don't think it takes you to pray more for your finances. I think it takes um, good stewardship. It takes you to sow seed. It takes you to make good decisions. It takes you to be generous. Um, 
Proverbs 11:24 says, I love what the, um, I think it's the message translation. It says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. So I think generosity is um, a real, um, it, like if you're gonna list a set of ingredients to have increase, um, be generous, be a good steward, be wise, be a giver, tithe, put God first, seek first his kingdom and all these things will be added to you. Plant water and God will give the increase. And, um, and always make good decisions. Be the best employee or employer that you can possibly be. Um, serve people, you know, be interested in other people's success and success will come to you. If you genuinely try to make other people succeed. Like if you're selling a product, don't sell it so that you can succeed. Sell it because you are truly convinced that it will help somebody else have what they truly need and what will truly bless them. Like if you really, if that's permeating through your, every cell in your body, you will have supernatural success because love serves. Uh, true success is a servant. It's not a, it's not served, it serves. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, great question, by the way. Um, how do you stay in shape? Um, thank you for thinking that. Uh, the camera is miraculous. The, uh, <laughs> thank God for lighting and good camera work. And, um, and you know, um, I committed myself to my soul health. I really have committed my life to soul health to, in fact, the book I'm writing right now, which I'm, you know, uh, trying to get out as fast as I can, but it's, it's, it's been, a, it's been crazy. But, um, my, my book right now, the working title is called Soul Power. Um, and it's all about the soul. It's all about the healing and the health of your emotions and your soul. And so I believe that when you, when you really commit to your soul exercise, your soul health, one of my daily routines to give to you that I learned in my life is fasting from wrong thinking. And so you can get that and get in spiritual shape and get in soul shape. And as your soul goes, third John verse two says, um, you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So I am 100% convinced in soul prosperity equals whole, produces whole prosperity. Soul health produces whole, whole health. And, um, and yeah, that means practical, uh, that, that, that resulted for me in practically having to hit the gym and, and having to, you know, you know, like Sylvester Stallone said, I heard him on an interview once. They said, how do you, um, how have you stayed in shape all these years? And, and he said, oh, I took a little, uh, little, little, a little fish, fish wire. You know, you've got a fish wire, your mouth shut. You know, basically you got to deal with uh, your diet and, um, and, uh, and not diet in the sense of deprivation. Don't deprive yourself of, a, of some good things to eat, but get control of what you're eating, get control of your calories and, you know, get a, get a coach if you need to, or look, there's so much online. There's so much free stuff on YouTube and so much free stuff on Instagram. There's so much free stuff. I get my workouts from a guy that gives it away for free. Like he puts his, he posts his workouts and I do my best to, you know, copy uh, those workouts. So anyway, enough about me. I hope that helps. It's soul health. It's all about soul health. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you for thinking kind things as well. Um, what are some practical things? Uh, how about what time is it? How about uh, one, one or two more questions? What are some practical things I can do to reparent myself? Um, for this person, they're saying while they still live under their parents' roof, but this is true for anybody to reparent yourself. Um, to re like every person, our emotional health is the result of being parented. 
Um, so our emotional health is either our emotional um, sickness, our soul sickness is either re the result of how we were parented or our soul health is the result of how we were parented. But we can't blame our parents because we can reparent ourselves. So it's not just how we were parented, but it's how we parent ourselves from the point at which we have the power over our choices and over our attitudes. Um, so that can, that can start at the age of eight or nine or, or 20 or 30, or whenever you get a, you know, a, a wake up call to the fact that you have power, you have control over your, over your attitude and over your emotions and over the choices you make. So I think, uh, to reparent yourself, it's total ownership. You have to take complete ownership of your life. Like my issues are mine. Nobody else's. I don't even blame my parents anymore. I don't blame God. I don't blame the devil. I, I don't blame my family. I don't blame my boss, my this or that. It's just, it's on me. It's not, it's not blame, blame, blame. It's not shame, blame. It's ownership. It's taking personal responsibility. And you reparent yourself really by learning what emotional intelligence is and what emotional, uh, we don't have time for this. Let me talk about emotional intelligence tomorrow. Okay. And, but it's really uh, to just give you, like we have an intelligent quotient IQ. There's also an EQ, emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. And it really is learning how to, in, how to shape our emotions, no matter how we're treated and how to shape what somebody has done to us, how to reshape what somebody has done to us to process it in a, in a healthy, emotionally healthy way. So, um, I hope that, I hope that answer at least starts to answer that question. Tune in tomorrow and tune in every day. I'm staying with you every day during this crisis after crisis, whatever you want, however you want to call it. In some places it's, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's died down in some places it's, it's, it's flared. Um, but we're all in it together and we all want to clamp down and, um, and just crush this thing. The God of peace shall crush Satan under your feet. Romans 16, 20 says, um, what could be the best outcome after this is all over? Victoria from Chicago asked. What a great question. Um, and what should change in ourselves and our lives for the best right now in order to stay changed? What could be the best outcome after this is all over is reprioritizing our lives. It's what I've been talking about since the first day. Like let's like this might end. What if this ended tomorrow? Have you reprioritized your life? I don't know. I don't mean, did you learn piano? Did you learn uh, Spanish? Did you learn French? Like those are things you can do the rest of your life. Don't feel like a failure if you didn't develop a new skill while everybody was suffering or develop a new uh, idea, a new business idea while everybody was suffering. Don't beat yourself up and demand that of yourself. How about just we come out of this with new priorities? that God's first people are first in our lives, God and people, you know, um, I thank my God for my every remembrance of you. Paul said, I think he got his priority. He was in jail when he wrote that in the Philippian to the Philippians, he was in prison and he thanked his God, my God, our God, your God for all his remembrance of people. Are people, do people bring you a good remembrance? Do you remember people in a good way or do you remember people in a bad way? I think the best outcome after all of this is that we have compassion more than we ever have. And we have, um, we look, we, we look after our, one another and we look after our priorities and we make God first. We, we want God honored and we want, and we honor God by loving one another. Jesus said by this is, Will all men know you're my disciples by your love for one another? And the fact that we're, we're all giving up, sacrificing something, it's kind of like if you've been a Catholic, it's kind of like this, this crisis has been Lent in a sense where, you know, for 40 days, not just Catholics, but other like uh, um, Episcopalians, different denominations, they, sell, they, they have Lent where they sell, give up something for 40 days. Hey, we're, we're kind of giving up um, social activity and giving up 
events and giving up gatherings and giving up some of the fun stuff for 40 days, sort of like um, as, a, as a sacrifice for the, for the few and for those that are suffering. And maybe we are overreacting, but better to be safe and better to care for the hurting and better to re because even if we overreacted, we've been given a gift. And the gift is to c compassion for one another and reprioritizing our lives and, 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 and stripping ourselves of what's not as essential as we thought it was. Hey, I love you guys. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for every person that is connecting with me and I just connect with them one on one. And I thank you that you're in this connection, Lord, and you connected us. And I pray you deepen our fellowship, our relationship through this season, that we reprioritize our lives, that we would truly walk in faith and wisdom and Lord, awaken everybody to the faith that over has overcome this world, faith in what you, G what you Jesus already did and the promises you already made and you gave them to us and all we have to do is receive them. We thank you for that. Give every person hope, free them today from anxiety, depression, fear, and give them hope about their finances, about their families, <clears throat> about their safety in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, I'll see you tonight for our 7 p.m. Bible study. It's going to be you and me and um, more of this if you like it and or, or God will do something else through me that'll bless you somehow tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time. God bless. See you then.